Hello everyone, this is Starkiller, and thanks for tuning in to another guide by a guy who mains Falcon. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to install the Wii U GameCube adapter for your PC. I think I'll go off first off by saying these instructions only work for Windows. So Mac users and the two Linux users of you that are out there, I'm afraid you're out of luck. So. Uh, the first thing you got to do is you'll want to download the latest version. Uh, his El Masivo's repository has all that you'll need and it automatically starts downloading down at the bottom. I'm, I'm using Chrome as you can see. Oh, I'm also using Windows 10. Uh, he has a change log that says that it works for Windows 10, but all the supported versions are XP to 10, so you should be good. If it says that this type of file can harm your computer, you'll want to keep it. It's all good. So I'm just going to go right ahead and follow the instructions. All the instructions are right here. I'll, I'll put the link on screen just so it's easier to see. But you can just follow the instructions on the screen. They're very simple. It's kind of easy to, it's easy to get wrong. But I've done this a, a ton of times now, so I shouldn't have any problems. I already know that my account has administrative rights and I know I'm not going to mess up anything so I don't need to create a system restore point, but you might want to do that. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is you got to plug the adapter into your computer's USB port. So the Wii U adapter has two plugs. You'll want to just plug in the black one. The gray one's just for like rumble. Computer will make a sound when you plug it in for the first time. So I've already downloaded the executable. So I'm going to open it. So as you can see, there's this, here's the installation window and that's the instructions. Just, it's really simple. Just follow the instructions. Next, next. And I want to create a desktop icon, so I'm going to click that. And then it's just going to install it. This is Zadig, Zadig, I don't know how it's pronounced. This is the thing that's going to let you actually get the driver working. This piece of software that it installed onto my computer, uh, I believe this is Zadig 2.2. Uh, oh no, 2.1, there we go. And I kept my version of Zadig on my computer because if I ever mess up the driver uh, in the future, I can just run this program and then it will reinstall it. So following the instructions, I'll want to I need to set this set this first tab to WUP 028. And then it's going to it has a target driver already, win USB. And it says reinstall for me, so. Okay. And then it's gonna install this driver. So close. And now I'm allowed to close out. And now VJoy automatically starts setting up. So just leave everything clicked and install. So there we go. VJoy has installed successfully. Hit OK. And finish okay so that didn't now you saw there was a small error message that said that it requires heightened elevate it requires higher privileges that's because the the gamecube feeder application requires admin rights this here's the the gamecube adapter software so i have my adapter already plugged in and you see it says starting driver, port one is detected. Okay, it runs through all of them. Driver successfully started entering input loop. And there we go. This means it's working, but it's not going to be entirely working. So I have to configure my controller. So I go to the, from this program here, I go to the Windows Gamepad Info button, click that. And then it's got a list of VJoy devices. So you go to properties, and I'm going to plug in my controller to port one. So I've plugged in my controller to port one and I move the control stick around 
There's my triggers and got all these buttons down here. If I was to go to VJoy, the second VJoy device, without switching my port, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but if I was to switch my port, if I was to switch which port my controller was plugged into, it would uh, change that. So this means I don't have to do anything. My controller is working. Sometimes you have to calibrate. And so I'm going to go through that process. So this is the calibration wizard. It's very simple. You can just follow the on-screen instructions. So I'm going to leave the handle centered and then I'm just pressing the A button. Hey, okay, and then this is this is the this is the controller or like the control stick calibration. So I just you just move this in circles and circles. And then I'm pressing a button. Leave the handle centered, press a button on the controller. The Z axis refers to the trigger. Now, the, do not you do not want to click it all the way. Just do it up and down a couple of times. And you can see it moving around. Uh, X rotation refers to the C stick, uh, specifically the left and right on the C stick. So I can just move it left and right, and it moves around. Y rotation is the Y axis on the C stick, so up and down. And then the Z rotation is the right trigger. So move that a couple of times and you see it works. So there we go. It's all done. Finished. So there we go. All my buttons work. So you might have to do that calibrate. If your controller isn't working, always go to here and go to test to see if it works. Uh, you might have to run through that calibration process for each of the other VJoy devices. Uh, but I'm but once you've set up one, it's easy to set up the rest. So anyways, once this program has says a driver successfully started entering input loop, then you can you can just close the software. Okay, that's all fine, but what's suppose I just turned on my computer or maybe I unplugged my If you ever if I let's say I unplugged my adapter and then I plug it back in, if I've done that, the driver is not going to be working. Anytime you plug, you unplug and then replug the adapter back in, you're going to have to turn the adapter back on. If the process was already running in the background and you turn the program on again, it's going to tell you that port one is all, it's going to tell you that port one is already owned by another feeder. And then it's going to start another process. These can build up, so you'll probably want to go through Task Manager and clear out, clear them out every now and then. But yeah, so this driver is successfully started entering the input loop. I can close this, and now let's open up Super Smash Flash 2 Beta. Now I'm going to actually start connecting the controller to Super Smash Flash 2 Beta. So I've already opened SSF2 Beta. This is a clean save file. I destroyed all my I destroyed all my data before. I just messed with the sound setting so it wasn't loud. When you go to the controls menu for the first time, this is what you'll see. Uh, standard default keyboard layout, tap jump, double tap. Uh, players two through four are don't have any inputs. And this drop down menu says keyboard. This drop down menu is what lets you select the method of playing. So if you wanted to play keyboard, you set it to keyboard. Following these instructions, you'll have four VJoy devices, and these, will course, and these correspond to the different ports on the adapter. However, they are in order. They are not in order. Uh, VJoy device, my, my controller is plugged into port one right now. VJoy device one is not port one. VJoy device two isn't even port one. VJoy device three, however, that's port one. It worked. Uh, they all correspond to a port. I don't remember which one corresponds to which, but it works. You'll just, you know, just go find out on your own which one's which. It doesn't matter which player mapping you have it set to. These things up here just tell you which player in-game is going to be using that layout. It doesn't matter what port you have the controller plugged into as long as it's using the proper VJoy device. So I'm just gonna go through and set this up with a standard Super Smash Brothers layout. Uh, 
as you can see, I've left the shields for last, and that's because you need to be very careful with what you do here. If you're following the standard Smash Brothers layout, you're going to put the shields on trigger. Uh, your first instinct is going to be to just click the trigger, and then you're going to end up with Axis 2 and Axis 3 for left and right trigger, respectively. You do not want this. If you do this, and if I was to go in the game right now and play with these settings, my character is, once I press, when I press shield for the first time, they're not going to shield, but as soon as I let go, they're going to never stop shielding. It's just going to loop forever. You need to make sure your shields are set to buttons, not axi, not, not an axis. So to do this, you want, you want the, the button part of the trigger, the clicky sound. So uh, what I do is I hold the trigger down most of the way, click the shield button in game, and then I finish the full press on the shield and then it's now set to the button. And I do the same thing for the other trigger. And there you go. My shield is set to button 6 and button 5 for left and right trigger, respectively. Uh, so, I go back. If I try to go here, my controller is not going to be doing anything. Uh, but this is an important step, regardless, because if you, if you just exit out, it's not going to save your controls. So, uh, I can't, I can't do anything. That's because you have to close SSF2 beta and restart it whenever you make changes to your control config. Okay, so we're back, and when I go to controls, you see it's all still here. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to turn off tap jump and double tap dash again, but when I move my control stick, there you go, you see it's moving, and same with my C stick. And sure enough, when I go in, when I go, when I go in game, I'll be able to move around. So there you have it. That's how you set up a GameCube controller for Super Smash Flash 2 Beta uh, using the official Nintendo Wii U adapter and El Masivo's drivers. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.